If you work with code at all, you've probably heard of the DRY principle. It stands for don't repeat yourself. And where this comes into play in Obsidian is the template plugin and the templater community plugin. These two plugins allow you to use and even create your own custom templates to insert into Obsidian so that you don't have to constantly rewrite the same thing over and over again. Templates save you time, energy, and you don't have to repeat yourself. Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today we're going to be talking about the template and templater plugins in Obsidian. One of them is a core plugin, the other one is a community plugin, and both are awesome. So let's jump right into Obsidian and see what we're looking at. So I have a blank file open here, it's my workbench file, and I'm just going to open up some settings. So in the settings menu, you can see core plugins and third party plugins. The first one we're going to look at is the core plugin, which is built into Obsidian, you can just turn it on or off. and what I'm going to be looking at is templates. Templates are really, really useful because they allow you to just insert blocks of text uh, and well, templates into your document. And this really comes in handy because there are certain variables that are built in by default, such as title, date, and time, so that you can insert timestamps and the title of the document itself. And we're going to show examples of these today. So once you turn on templates in the core plugin, you can just toggle this on. There will be a options menu underneath, underneath the plugin options. And we're going to find templates. And then you have some options here. So I leave all of these formats by exactly how they are because this is ISO date time. Or um, I don't remember what the acronym stands for. But this is the date time format that I prefer because it sorts chronologically. So the other last piece of information is where do you want your templates to be held? I choose to have all of them located in a single template folder. This means that when I open up the insert template menu, it's not going to pull a bunch of random stuff. It's just only my templates, which is probably what you want. So then I have in my uh, file explorer here, I have the templates folder and then I have subfolders and the actual item and the notes themselves. Now, you can have nested folders in here, and there are all the files are picked up just the same. So you don't have to worry about any sort of weird, like, what folder do I specify? Can I have folders within folders? Yes, yes, you can. So it's just anything under the template folders or templates folder recursively are all considered templates. So I'm going to show you one. Let's actually make one from scratch. So I'm going to say, hey, templates, make a new note. And what are we going to call this template? We're just going to call this test. So what I want to show you is um, how we can actually use this template. So let's say this is an example. Great. So now I'm going to go to my workbench note and we're going to be using this template. So what do we call it? We called it test. So now I have this bound to a specific hotkey, uh, command shift S, or if you're on Windows, it would be control shift S or control shift I, I for insert. So I'm gonna do command shift I, and now it's only showing me my templates from all those folders, only the templates, not my entire vault. So this is actually what I want. So I'm going to say test. Oh, there it is. And I'm going to insert test. Now, what was inserted? Not the name test, but the actual contents of the template called test. So we go there. There's the text. If we go back, Workbench now contains that text. This is really, really useful because, for instance, I have a template called meta, which is just like all the meta information for a brand new note. And when I insert this, all of this is inserted at once, including the name of the note itself. Oh, what's the curly brace, curly brace title thing mean? So in the template plugin, the built-in template plugin, there are three pieces of metadata, or really three variables that you can use to automatically insert relevant information when you add a template to a file. So let's, let's uh, refactor our test template here. So we can say, this is an example. And then we can say, hey, we're going to add a template called title there. And we're gonna also going to add date. And then next to it, we're going to add time. Now you saw in the settings menu, I left these blank. So it's going to be year, month, day, hour, minute. So when I insert these, it's actually going to show date and time. So let's check out what this looks like. So I'm going to open up my workbench. And now, blank workbench, we know what's in the file test. I'm going to insert a template called test. And now it says this is an example. The name of this current file, which is workbench, the date and the time. Now, this is already really useful and cool. 
But let's see what other kind of things we can do with this. So I'm going to delete all that, and we're going to go back to the template. What if I wanted the name of the file to already automatically be linked inside of the document, which is what I actually have set up? So I can add the two uh, square brackets around it, and now it's going to be a link. Awesome. And let's say I like the date time, but I also want it to be highlighted when I insert it. Okay, cool. So now let's go back to the workbench. I'm going to insert test. And now this is already a link. And when I go to preview, we can see that we actually have a link to the workbench note and the timestamp is highlighted. So this is the way that you can work with these uh, pieces of information, the variables to insert relevant information into your documents with easy key presses. And where this really comes in handy is when you're building like large templates. For instance, whenever I'm in uh, looking at media or literature notes and kind of uh, processing literature papers or whatever, I actually have some uh, particular templates here for different types of mediums. So I have a book template, I have a template for research papers, a template for YouTube videos, and these templates are easy to use. And you can see I actually do use these variables in here, as well as some status emoji tags, and all this stuff is inserted in one go. And I don't have to deal with any sort of weird uh, shenanigans with anything. So I could say, hey, we're going to be inserting. I read a book. I'm going to insert my book template. Insert book. There we go. And now all that meta information is there, and I can easily just fill in the rest. It's easy. It's done. It's out of the way. And this is why this is one of the very powerful features that I make prolific use of. And this doesn't even touch on the Templator plugin, which is a community plugin that expands upon this functionality and lets you use some very powerful features. So before we get into the Templator plugin, if you like any of the content I put out about Obsidian or you want my custom CSS or my own templates that I make, like that you've seen uh, examples up here, like my article, book, or paper templates, if you'd like to grab those for free, um, I have a newsletter I'm building, and it is a it is linked in the description and the pinned comment below. If you'd like to sign up, you can hear about what I'm working on. If I have any future courses developing, that's where I'll be talking about those. And if there's any of this interests you, or if you want to pick up those items, sign up at the link below and hope to see you there. So let's actually dive right back into Templator and take a look at what we're looking at. So the Templator plugin is not a core plugin, which means it actually is a third-party plugin. So we'll have to have safe mode off. We'll have to browse for Templator. And then once you click here, you can install it, or in my case, update or whatever. You'll have to turn it on. Mine is on. But we'll have, once that's on, you'll have a options menu here under plugin options. Going to Templator, you can see this interface. Now. What you're going to do here is you're going to say, hey, where are my templates located? And this is the same thing as the templates plugin, which is I just say, hey, my folder named templates, that's where all of the executable templates are. And Templator basically can act as the template core plugin by itself. Um, and one thing you're going to have to do is be careful about which hotkey you use to insert templates, but we'll get there. So timeout is how long do you want a second uh, or how you want to, how long do you want a command to wait before it just says okay I can't run this anymore and quit it's defaulted to 5 seconds and then here's where we actually define our templates you can see I have an example here but we're not going to do this we're going to do something completely from scratch so when I did the curly curly title date time that is like the pattern that is replaced upon inserting of a template so we're going to create one from scratch we're going to say YouTube, and that is the replacement text that we're going to have run. So what is the actual command we want to have run? So what goes here? What Templator does and why it is so incredibly powerful is that Templator allows you to run command line commands and insert the output from standard out into Obsidian documents. Now, I've tested this with a couple different examples and certain multi-line things I don't think really work or they don't work well. So what does really work very well is like a single line option or really simple pieces of information, counts, summaries, some pieces of text, whatever. I haven't really pushed this too far to see how far I can get it to, to work, but it's already really powerful because basically if you can call it from the command line, you can insert it into a document. So this means things like Python, R, bash, whatever. So we're gonna make our own custom command line template. And I'm going to put this over here, open up a terminal, 
And what I'm going to put is I'm going to say, let's see, we have to go to our path. A path is where your computer expects to find all of your executables, such as command line scripts that you develop. For me, that is going to be in my local bin directory, my local binaries. I have some stuff in here. That's cool. But we're going to make one called, let's see, uh, touch YouTube dot sh. Now you don't need the sh, but I just added anyways. We're going to make it executable chmod plus x to add executable status to YouTube script. We can go into the YouTube script, vim YouTube script. We're going to insert a shebang, which for me is just going to be user bin environment shell. And then what do we want to have our script insert into the document by just saying, hey, send this to standard out. We're just going to add echo. Hello, YouTube from the command line. Awesome. That's all it's going to say. That's all it's going to do. So now we can save and quit that file. And if I just run YouTube, ah, not going to work because we actually have that extension. We need to say YouTube.sh. Now you can see, ah, it turned a different color. Bam. Okay. That's standard output. It displays text in the terminal. Great. So now in Obsidian, what we're going to say is, what is the system command? And that would be YouTube.sh. That's it. What command do you want me to run and insert over this text when I find that text in a document after you insert a template? So we're going to click Add Template. It now exists. That user-defined template now exists. So now, because all of our templates are under the Templates folder, I can now go to my Templates folder. We're going to take our prior template, Test. We're going to remove everything. We're going to insert YouTube. And now when I go to my workbench file and I insert the test template, it's now using our user defined templater template. Uh Oh, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? So the contents of the test template is, you know, the curly curly YouTube, but it didn't replace. So this is where you will get tripped up. If you weren't, if you don't look at what key bindings you can um, place. So my key bindings, hotkey, when I'm doing templates, if I insert a template, it's command shift I. So that's my insert command. If you want to rely completely on templater for all of your plugin inserts, which if you're going to use it is probably best because it's saying, hey, I can insert all of your plugin or all of your templates like normal, but I can also do these special user defined ones. That's where you're probably going to want to say, okay, we're not going to use the core plugin. We're going to use templater, which probably work will work best. So this one has option E. I'm not going to use that. I don't really, I mean, I'm going to fiddle with this later, but really what it means is that you need to actually use the templater insert command. For instance, I can open up the command palette and I can say templater. There we go. Insert template from templater. Now I can do that and then YouTube. And now, oh, actually that's the wrong one. YouTube, we need to actually insert test. So we're going to do test or templater. Insert a template. We're going to call test. And that actually inserts there. And this one, <laughs> of course, it doesn't work first try. Let me get right back to that. So I'm actually not sure why it didn't work first try, but I did manage to fix it. I thought it was being too picky with having the echo command within a script. So basically calling a command from within the command. But really what I had to do, I'm not sure why I didn't pick up that it was in my path, you know, the executable path uh, directory, is you have to specify the path here, I guess. If you're going to run a script and not just a command line command, I guess it's going to say, I just said, hey, my home directory dot local bin and then the name of the script. I did rename it to test that, but you know, really same thing. So that was how I fixed it. But really back to this. So we're going to insert templater, insert the template, test, and now hello YouTube from the command line. So in any case, what this shows is that you can actually define a script. And if I show you that script again, I did rename it just to test, but really we, get, we opened up that script and let's see here, YouTube. So we made a script. It echoes hello YouTube from the command line into standard output so we can run that, you know, YouTube, there we go. I can run it just as a normal command, YouTube, there we go. And now from within Obsidian, I can say, hey, when you insert a template with templater and it finds this variable, replace that variable with the output of this command. The command being the entire path home dot local bin to that script's name. I'm not sure why I didn't just pick up the script's name as a command because that is a folder in my local path. Maybe it's a bug, who knows? 
But in any case, what this shows is that you can do crazy things with the command line because it's not just bash, it's Python or any scripting language that could be an executable. And then you can take the standard output from that command and insert it into your documents. This is incredibly powerful because that means we're not limited to just the built-in variables. We can define our own. And there are some great examples in the template or documentation about such as like using uh, wttr.in to insert emoji and ASCII text for the current weather in your uh, local municipality. But also something really interesting is like this test one here. You can actually echo and do some like math. We could do date math or using the date plugin or the, the date um, command line command. The sky is the limit, really. So however you want to take this, you can just run with it because it's all in the command line, basically. So hopefully you find this interesting. Hopefully this has like, shown you some of the power of what you can do with templates. I make prolific use of templates. I think it's one of the core features that just really makes this program really easy to use and really just reduces the friction from thought to content creation is I don't have to worry about structuring all of my stuff, copy and paste from here. It's just insert my template, fill out my metadata, and I'm off the races. And it's just absolutely phenomenal. And a quick note before we go, um, thank you to the patrons who support this channel. And I, I highly appreciate everyone who donates, buy me a coffee, PayPal, any, any way of you support this channel, I really appreciate it. And a quick shout out to the patrons, Devin, Ed, Hyungjun, Leonardo, Brandon, Klaus, Paul, John, Joel, John, and Alberto. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And I will catch you all in the next one.